Welcome to this tuition video on unlocking the history of your house using the Council Archives. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. The Inner West Council is happy to announce that we have digitised the Council Archives, which include all the rate books, valuation books and Council minutes of the former Council areas of Leichhardt, Ashfield and Marrickville. Today's presentation is focusing on tips and tricks in conducting our house history using the records of the old Ashfield Council, which included the suburbs of Ashfield, Summerhill, parts of Croydon and Ashbury. The same principles can then be applied to other suburbs in the Inner West Council, with a few variances in the materials available. We hope you enjoy this tuition video. Hi, I'm a member of the Community History Team. I will now be conducting a presentation on how to undertake a house history using online council resources. This presentation will include what information can be found in these records and some useful tips when using the Ashfield archives. After my presentation, my colleague will demonstrate how to use these online council resources. Age of your house. It's not only the age of a house, house histories are important because they tell us about the makeup of the suburb, how it developed and about the people who lived there. Homes hold a wealth of information, stories, and some mysteries. What type of information do people want to find out? Did my house have a name? Pre-1915, there was no numbering. House names were the main way of, of identifying homes. House names give a house personality and can have different meanings. The name of a ship that carried men to war, a place where people came from, or a name in reverse, such as Yasma from the Ramsey surname. House names can be found on land valuations, sewage diagrams, in the SANS directory and electoral rolls. If your house is not named, this is a perfect opportunity to add that finishing touch and add uniqueness and individuality. When was my house built? We ascertain built date and age of a house using a variety of resources, including rate books, valuation books, building registers. Where can I find a photograph of my house? Our house photo collection is built on donations and contributions from local associations, local residences and researchers. Therefore, not every house is featured in the collection. We are always happy to accept donations of photographs capturing local Inner West houses. Built date of my house. The building and development application registers are available online from 1909 to 1980. The entries are arranged by the date the application was received. The names of the owners and builders are often noted in the registers but plans such as floor plans are not often included. To access development and building application records relating to your house, contact the Inner West Council at council at innerwest.nsw.gov.au or you can phone 93925000. Would there be house plans available? Ashfield Council holds paper BAs and DAs from 1936 to 2018. Electronic DAs from 2019. Are there other plans or maps available to help me trace the history of my house? Subdivision plans are useful resources as it can indicate early properties, landmarks and roads and often includes name changes. Waterboard plans are held for the years 1890s to 1930. Would you like to find out more about your house and the people who live there? How do you trace a house history? Neighbours. A good starting point is with those who have lived in the street for a long time. They may have a wealth of knowledge to share and possible photos of your house, parts of your house, or even in a streetscape. Previous owners who you bought your house from. Their details will be on the title deeds of your home. Resources most commonly used to research houses. 
rate books, land valuations, building application registers, sewage diagrams, SANS directories, electoral rolls, probate packages and deceit estates files, birth, death and marriage notices in newspapers. Rate books. Each local government area has different surviving records. Rate books were created for each financial year and provide a history of who lived in your house. Earlier rate series are organised according to wards, then by streets. Ashwood rate books, 1874 to 1938. You will need to know what ward your house was in. From 1874 to 1879, there were only two wards, the North Ward and the South Ward. East Ward was created in 1880 and the North East Ward in 1903. The North Ward, 1874 to 1938. South Ward, 1874 to 1938. East Ward, 1880 to 1938 the North East Ward, 1904 to 1938. Keep in mind, 1916 rate book is missing. Some tips. From 1930 onwards, additional information was recorded, such as if there was a rate extension or a non-payment of rates. From 1937 onwards, entries were typed, making it much easier to read. From 1938 onwards, entries were no longer listed by street. What information may be found in these records? Street names. They were written horizontally or vertically on the left-hand side of the page. Name of the estate, section number and lot number, if known. Street numbers. Some early books do not record street numbers. Street numbers are recorded for one side of the street at a time. Name of the owner and the occupation. Change of owner, the original entry is crossed out and the new owner recorded. Name of tenant and the occupation. Change of tenant, the original entry is crossed out and the new tenant recorded. Description of property, whether it be a house, cottage, hotel, shop or land. Valuation or assessment cost of property, dimensions in feet, may contain a brief description of the property, the construction material, the number of rooms, and estimate date of construction was also included. Changes to a property, alterations and any additions. Helpful hints. If your property has or previously had two street frontages, it may be listed under the other street name. House numbers don't always appear in the early rate books. Street names may have changed over time. If there is a jump in rates between one year and the next, this is often a sign that a house may have been built on the property. It may be the year your house was built. It may also indicate major renovations. Record the owners and occupants of houses on either side of the property. Valuation books. The New South Wales General Department was established in 1916 in order to assess land values for the purposes of rates and taxation. Prior to this, land valuation was undertaken by local councils. The New South Wales Valuate General Valuation lists are held for the years 1928, 1961 and every three years. These lists are arranged by ward and then in alphabetical order by street name. What information may be found in these records? Owner, date of transfer, cash or terms, house number, house name, year, estate or subdivision, lot and plan number, dimensions of land, improved and unimproved value of the property, details of improvements on the land such as a garage, annual rates, title volume and folio number. Here's an example taken from a page of a valuation record. 
Number one, the things that you'll find, the ward, the date the valuation was occurred, the street name, the owner, in this case, the owner has been crossed out and the new owner has been written in, an address. In this case, the owner is not the, she's the owner, but not the occupier, a house name, the estate, the type of building it was, in this case, a cottage, the DP number and the lot number. The areas, the or dimension in feet, and the unimproved and improved value. Valuation cards commenced in the 1920s and contained title details, description of land, locality, and improvements such as buildings and fences, owners' names and changes of ownership. Valuation cards for Ashfield are held for the years 1920 to 1922 for the North and East Wards. No cards for the North East Wards are available. A very small portion of the South Ward cards exist. Here's an example of a valuation card. Um, notice here the occupation given for Ida Louise Fraser is a married woman. This would not happen today. Building application registers were compiled by council to record applications of building works or subdivision of property. Building registers record construction of new buildings, whether they be houses, garages, stables, or factories, alterations to existing buildings, conversions of a house to flats, or subdivision of land. The information contained in these registers includes the application number, property address, application's name and or builder, the date the application was submitted, whether it was approved or not approved, date of completion, costing, the council ward and a description of the proposed building work, the type of build and materials used. Subdivision plans. Subdivision plans were produced by property developers and real estate agents to advertise land sales during the 19th and early 20th century. Subdivision plans contain the name of this, the estate, size of lots, lot numbers, date and location of the auction. Sometimes show houses already built, churches, buildings or landmarks. The plans may help you to identify when an area was settled and when the houses were built. Something to remember, not every subdivision plan produced is available. And there are additional subdivision plans found on the New South Wales State Library webpage. Metropolitan Water, Sewerage and Drainage Board. Public work departments were survey plans of the Sydney area for sewerage purposes from 1874 to 1915. Detailed survey sheets or the 1930 series supplemented the PWD plans and extended to include new areas 1917 to 1931. The detailed sheets are maps which provide information about buildings which existed at the time of the survey. Details of houses may include street name, house number and a name, lot number and the outline of the building. There are numerous research tools on the internet. Post office directories. They were a combination of a telephone directory and a simple street directory. They were alphabetical listing in surname, alphabetical listing in suburb, and alphabetical listing in business names. They recorded occupiers, but not the owners. The Sands Post Office Directory is just one example, or more commonly known as the Sydney Sands Directory. Sands Directory was published every year from 1858 to 1933. There were exceptions in 1860, 1862, 1872, 1878 and 1881, 
when it was not published. Before 1885, the entries were alphabetical listing by surnames. After 1885, suburbs were arranged in alphabetical order by streets. The directive was published in January of each year using details gathered the previous October. Information was recorded through door-to-door -door surveys and not always accurate. Each year starts with the city directory, followed by the other Sydney suburbs, all in alphabetical order. Streets are listed alphabetically, starting with one side of the street, then the other. Included a directory of trades, commercial companies, government organisations, churches, institutions and professionals. How can the Sands Directory help? Record names of people who lived at an address, owners or tenants. Occupation, a house name if there was one. House names also may have changed over time. Street renumbering. It can also provide an approximate date of construction. Helpful hints to remember. Record the house names and the houses on the side of the street you are researching. Note the nearest corners, cross streets and notable buildings. Remember vacant blocks are not recorded. Street names, the current name of a street may have changed. Trove, a free online Australian database created by the National Library of Australia, which contains digitised searchable newspapers from the Sydney Morning Herald and other local newspapers. It can assist with researching people, such as property owners or locating articles about specific properties, family notices, photos and maps. Thank you for that presentation. I'm going to give a demonstration on how to use the archive section of the NOS Libraries catalogue and in particular we'll be looking at accessing the Ashford Council archives that are on the catalogue. After this demonstration you'll know how to access the Ashford archives and paired with the information in my colleague's presentation you'll be able to use these resources when doing research into a building or house in the former Ashford local government area. As mentioned, the Ashwood Archive section of the catalogue currently holds three main types of digitised records that can be used to help you in your research. These are the rate books, the variation books, and the building registers. The information within these items can give you details such as house name, house owners, and how the building was being used. And you can usually trace through these records to help determine the build date of a building. Before we start opening the records up, there's a couple of things that we need to walk through. They are, at one, how to access the library catalogue so that we can access the archives, and two, how to view the ward maps that we have on the library catalogue so that you can help figure out what ward the piece of land you're researching belongs to. So the archives are stored on the library catalogue, so that means we need to access the catalogue. To do this, it's very really easy. We can just Google NOS Council and we can just click on the top result. We can see that it says nos.nsw.gov.au. And this will take us to the homepage of the NOS Council website. And if we move the cursor to the Explore tab and then we can scroll under Libraries and go to Search the, search the Catalogue. And now we're on the library catalogue. If we scroll down, you can see that there's a local history tab on the right hand side, and there's a council archives button in this section. And that's what we click to go into the council archives. But we're not going to worry about that just yet, because first we're gonna do a catalogue search for, for the actual council ward maps. This is very simple. If we just go to the search bar in the middle of the banner and type in Ashfield, ward map and change the drop down menu to say all resources and then we just hit the search button. We get a couple of results, a 2000s Ashfield Council ward map and an 1880s Ashfield Council ward map. 
We're not going to click into the 2000s council ward map because that's based on the boundaries after around 1986. So if we open up the 1880s Ashfield council ward map, you'll see that there's a bit of information about the map in the scope and contents and that the map was produced in around 1886. This is important because it means it's only when we had north, south and east ward in Ashfield. Nevertheless, it's a very useful map and we can open up the map by clicking view full image. And this loads the map. We can zoom into the map by clicking the plus button on the left hand side. During this period, the ward boundaries are fairly easy to understand. Uh, the names of the wards basically tell the story. North Ward is the land north of Ashfield Railway Station. South Ward is the land south of the station whilst East Ward is the land in Summer Hill. The mostly empty Double Road estate is also included in East Ward. We're currently having a 1950s council map digitized, which will be shortly uploaded to the catalog. When it's uploaded to the catalog, it will just show in the search results when we do a search for Ashford Ward map. Um, that will hopefully be uploaded in the next couple of weeks. So now I'm going to show you how to access the archives. So I'm going to go back to the home page and I'm just going to hit the interest button on the, in the banner. Click the council archives button, we'll be taken to a page. This page has got nine catalog records for the nine former councils that make up the land of the interest council today. But we're just going to open up the Ashfield council record. So if I scroll down and just click on the Ashfield link, will be taken to the Ashfield Council Archives page. I'm going to refer to this page as the Ashfield Archives page, and we're gonna access it a few times during this demonstration. If we scroll further down, at the very bottom, there's something that says bookmark link. This link is very important, as the URL and the URL bar cannot actually be shared it's only a temporary link and at, at the end of each day it expires. So you don't want to save the URL in the URL bar or share it with a friend or use it as a citation. Instead, you want to use the bookmark link. And then when we click the link, it takes us to this screen. I'm now going to bookmark this page by just moving the URL down to my bookmarks bar. And I'm just gonna go back into the record by clicking on Ashford Council. We're now going to look at the Ashford Council rate books. To access the rate books, the variation books, or the building registers, we have to click into the hyperlink next to the includes button. So if I click on this link, it takes us to another search results page, and we can see that the rate books, the variation books, and the building registers are all listed. So I'm gonna open up the rate books now. And first of all, I'm just gonna go straight down to the bottom. And here I can see that the bookmark link is here again. So if I wanted to just bookmark the Ashford Council rate books, I would just click on this link and then add it to my bookmarks. As we scroll back up, we can see that we have a very detailed scope and content section. There's a few important things here, but one of the most important things is that prior to 1896, the rate books do not include uh, street numbers. So that can make searching the pre-1896 rate books quite difficult. After 1908, the, the rate books also don't include street numbering. Some other changes occur after 1908, which is mentioned at the top of the section. But now we're, and now we're just gonna scroll down again. And again, we're gonna hit the hyperlink next to the include section of the record. This takes us to all the rate books that we currently have uploaded onto the catalogue. The books are ordered by date, starting with the 1872 rate book. I've just opened up the 1896 rate book and the 1909 rate book to help show how different they are after 1908. Here in, here in the 1896 rate book, we can see that the street numbers are listed, the person living in the house is listed, and the owner is listed. There's also a description of property. So the very first entry is house plus land owned by Captain W. Adams. Moving across to the 1909 rate book, we can see that the street numbering is removed. The person occupying the house is also removed. 
and there's no description of property anymore. Ratebook files are organized via ward. We have all four wards listed in each file and always in the order of North Ward first, South Ward second, East Ward third, and North East Ward last. I'm now gonna show you how to access the variation books. I'm gonna go back to the Ashfield archives page that, that I bookmarked and I'm gonna click into it. And I'm gonna go into the series records and now I'm gonna open up the variation books. As you can see in the date range here, we've got a lot of variation books in the system. As I scroll down, again, we've got a detailed scope and content section explaining to people what you can expect to find in the variation books. We do have the variation books organized slightly differently to the rate books. Here we can see that we have a link for 13 sub-series in instead of item records. So if I click into the 13 sub-series, for the 1884 variation book, which is listed separately. So we have 1908, 1920, 1922, and so on. I'm, gonna, I'm going to open up the 1928 variation book. And then I'm gonna click into the item records. And here we can see that we have North Ward, South Ward, East Ward, and North East Ward organized separately. If I just click open the, the 1928 North Ward file, it will take me to this screen. I can download the file by clicking view resource online. And this will start downloading the file as you can see in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. For the size of the variation books can get quite large. Here we've noted that the file size for, for this particular book is 388 megabytes. If the file size is 200 megabytes or higher, we try to warn customers before they start downloading the file. But a good rule to follow, to follow is that the variation books are always 200 megabytes and higher, and the rate books are always 200 megabytes or lower except for the 1907 rate book. Going back to the list of variation books that we have, I just want to quickly mention that the 1908 variation books can be quite hard to use. The, the quality of the scan is not particularly high and the ordering system within the book is quite hard to understand. we don't have any books from the 1910s. Additionally, the 1920 variation cards are not a complete set. We are missing North East Ward and most of South Ward. From 1922 and onwards, we do have complete sets. So going down, we've got the variation books up until 1949. I'm going to speak about the building register. So again, I'm going to click on the Ashfield archives bookmark that I made for myself. And I'm going to click into Ashfield Council. And I'm going to open up the building registers. Again, a very detailed scope and content section with a couple of hints. The building registers up until the 1930s often don't include the street number of the building that has been approved. This means you often need to already know who the owner of the building is or the subdivision information, such as lot number or the section of the subdivision. Building registers is sorted solely in date order, as my colleague said. This means you either need to go through the whole thing to potentially find a history of any alterations made to your building or you need to have a theory regarding the possible date of when a particular alteration was made. You can sometimes determine this by looking through the rate books and seeing if, seeing if there's a sudden increase in the unimproved capital value of a land. I've just opened up the 1909 building register because during my colleague's presentation, she mentioned that the building registers don't include four plans. And that's correct, except for the 1909 building register. The very first building register is the only one to include four plans. And as I scroll in, you can see that this particular 
uh, building has got a quite detailed um, plan. So you can see dining room, bedroom, and so forth. The building registers after 1911 no longer have this piece of information in it. If I move across and go to the top, we can see that this building is in Croydon, but again, there's no street number. So you either need to know the owner of the land or you need to know the lot number. I've now gone back to the home page of the catalog because I'm going to show you how to access the water ball plans that my colleague talked about in her presentation. We have the plans from the 1880s and 1890s on the catalog. The 1930s plans are not on the catalog at this moment. To search for the water ball plans, we just go to the search bar again and type in Ashfield Water Board. And you can see we get about 81 search results. If I just click on the very first search result, you can see that the catalog record mentions the names of the streets that border the particular plan. This means that we can do a search for particular streets. So if I just copy, copy Oldman Street and go back to the search result, I can search Ashfield Water Board and Oldman Street. And then my search result gives me about four different plans to have a look at. This is a useful trick to use when searching, but this trick doesn't work for smaller streets. Kurt Street, for example, is located off of Chandos Street near Ashfield Park. If I do a search for Kurt Street, I won't get anything. However, if I do a search for Chandos Street, it gives me seven different search results. I could then open up each of these seven search results until I find Kurt Street, which is much better than opening up 80 odd files. If I scroll down, I know that Kurt Street is in sheet number 56. So I would click sheet 56 and then download it. and I can see that Kurt Street is just located off of Chandos Street. The water board plans were the last resource that I wanted to show you. In addition to these resources, there are the external resources that my colleague mentioned in her presentation. These include the Sydney Sands directory, available on the City of Sydney Council website, the subdivision posters, available on the State Library of New South Wales, and digitized land titles available on the Historical Lands Record Viewer. When I'm doing a house history, I think the best path is to look at the entry in the 1928 variation books and see what information is in there, such as house name, subdivision information, and so forth. I then check the water board plans to see if I can determine whether the building has been built by the 1880s or 1890s. After I've done those two things, I then search the rate books. If you download the files onto, onto your computer, it's best to store them in a folder. The files from the archive come with clear file names, so there shouldn't be any confusion in organizing the files. The waterboard plans have slightly different file names, but you can rename the files after you've downloaded it. This has been our demonstration on the council archives. I hope it's been useful. And if you have any questions or feedback, you can contact the history team via our email address of history at innerrest.nsw.gov.au or, or contact the Innerrest libraries on 9392 5588 and ask to speak to a member from the history team.